Hey, this is Math 2, Unit 10, Worksheet Number 6. We're looking at alternate forms of quadratic functions. So here we go. Looking at the first one, here we have it says identify equivalent functions. And then wants to know which of the following are equivalent to y equals x squared minus 16. And so what we're talking about is that there's different ways to write this quadratic function. And so while these are all a variety of things that look all different, which we could say there are some things if we uh, factor or we combine like terms, we can see how it might be the same quadratic equation that's right there. So for example, in this first one, if I look at y equals x minus 0 squared minus 16 and compare it to this one, the minus 16 is the same as right there. That looks good. But then I had this x minus 0 squared. But what is x minus 0? x minus 0 is simply x, right? So I'm left with just the x right there. And then I have x squared, which still matches there. So now I have the x squared matches, the minus 16 matches. So this would be one that would be equivalent to what's there. When I look at this one, I have x minus 4 squared. And so you might be tempted to think that that's going to be the same. But if you were to actually write that out and do x minus 4 times x minus 4, and then go ahead and, and, uh, and, and distribute the things, right? Multiply it out the whole way. We end up with x squared over there. And then you have on the outsides and insides, you have a um, negative 4x and another negative 4x, which combine to make a negative 8x. And then on the outside, you have last terms, we have a positive 16 there. So when you actually distribute the terms there, you end up with x squared minus 8x plus 16, which does not match. So that's not going to work. This one, similar to what's above, we have our negative 16 at the back, or our minus 16. And here it's x plus 0. Again, the 0 can go away, and you're left with just x squared. And so that will work just fine. For D, we have 1x squared. Now, the 1 in front really doesn't matter, does it? It can go away. We can ignore the 1. It's just x squared, right? 0x means it can go away. I don't need to worry about that term there. So we're looking good so far. But this is a plus 16, so that's not going to match the minus 16. So it's not going to work. Here, what we can see is we have x plus 4 times x minus 4. Is that the same? Well, let's see what happens. We multiply this out. We have x times x, which is x squared. Then you have a minus 4x plus 4x and then minus 16. And when we work this out, minus 4x plus 4x go away. So you're left with what? x squared minus 16, which is what we're looking for there. And finally here I distribute the 4 first of all. So you have 4x squared, distribute the 4 there. That becomes a minus 16. And so while the minus 16 is good, this is a 4x squared, not the same. So it's not going to work. Okay, do the same thing for this one here. You want to work that out and see which ones are going to match, which ones aren't. You're going to end up with three that will and three that won't. Down here, it says rewrite the quadratic equation written in vertex form as an equivalent equation written in standard form. So we're turning from vertex form, which is here, into standard form. So we're going to multiply things out and switch things around and combine like terms to put it in standard form. So let's do some odd ones together. First, we have x minus 6 squared, so that can be rewritten as x minus 6 times x minus 6 and still minus 12. And this, if we multiply it out, we have x times x is x squared. We have x times minus 6 is minus 6x. Here we have another minus 6x. And here we have a positive 36. And we can bring down the negative 12 there. I can group together my minus 6x's. All right, so I have an x squared minus 12x. And then I can group together the plus 36 and the minus 12, and that becomes a positive 24. All right, so a couple steps there, combining some like terms. Looking at number five, same idea. Before I distribute that half, I'm going to go ahead and first of all, I'm going to square that out. I could probably do it the other way, but let's just do this first. I'm going to do x plus 4 times x plus 4, and that's all plus 2, and I have a 1 half in front. Okay. So at this point, I could distribute that all the way through, but let's do this part uh, in here real quick. Okay, so let's do this. I have x squared, and then here I have a 4x, and here I have a 4x, and here I have a plus 16. Okay, I'm going to put that in parentheses because it still needs to go with that one half first of all, and the plus 2 is on the outside. So I combine some like terms on the inside of the parentheses, so I have one half times x squared plus 8x 
plus 16 plus 2. And when I distribute the half all the way through that, we end up with 1 half times x squared, which is 1 half x squared. 1 half times 8x is going to be, half of 8 is 4x. <laughs> and then half of 16 is going to be 8 plus 2. I can combine the 8 plus 2 <coughs> to turn that into 1 half x squared plus 4x plus 10. And that's my solution for number 5. Number seven, this is really more of uh, probably what today's lesson was about more than anything else. It says that they're finding x-intercepts for the quadratic function listed here. They agreed to put in zero for y and solve for x. Pablo says solve by square rooting. Amanda says they solve by factoring. So let's see what happens. Pablo says, all right, let's put the nine over there. So plus nine, that's good. X minus one squared. Then he takes the square root of both sides, so he ends up with plus and minus three equals x minus one. That's great. So then he does a positive three, and then he, right, moving that over, this becomes, uh, we wrote it yesterday or the other day as one plus or minus three equals x. Same idea. One plus three is equal to four, and one minus three is a minus two. So he ends up with x equals four and x equals minus two. This is when y equals zero. So for the two terms, y is equal to zero, put the y zero there, and our x value is gonna be four and negative two. When you look at Amanda's work, she did the same or something similar. She said, well, let's go ahead and factor this out here. And so, or, you know, multiply it out. So x minus one times x minus one, she breaks it apart like this. She multiplies it, so you have x squared, you have a negative one x and another negative one x, which form a negative two x and negative one times negative one is positive one. And then it looks like she's gonna combine one and negative nine to make a negative eight. So she has x squared minus two x minus eight. And then she um, does the factoring again and puts it back into this form, which gets her with x minus four x plus two. Let's see if it's right, that's x squared. This is two x minus four x, which is a two, negative two x. And negative four times positive two is negative eight, so that's good, so that's all right. She sets each one of these terms equal to zero and solves for x, so that x equals four and x equals negative two. So for her, her intercepts are four comma zero and negative two comma zero. So they both were able to find the x-intercepts. They did it in a different method, but they were able to find them that way. So the other day we saw by using the square root of the term to find the x. And what we're looking at today is that you can actually factor it and set the term or the little cluster here, x minus four, you can set that equal to zero and see what the other x-intercept is going to be. And really what you find out is, what is it? It's the opposite value of that. So if it's a negative four, then the x is gonna be equal to four. Let's turn to the next page and see how this plays out in our next questions. All right. So it says use a zero product property, which is what we were just doing to solve the equations. All right, so looking at the first one real quick, that means you take y plus six and you set it equal to zero. We subtract six from both sides and y equals negative six. And here we do y minus four equals zero. We add four to both sides and y equals four. So my solution set is gonna be negative six and that's my solution set in this case right there for what y is going to equal. All right, same idea here. I do 3f plus 2 equals 0. I subtract 2 from both sides, so 3f equals negative 2. Divide both sides by 3, so f equals negative 2 thirds. And then here we set f minus 5 equal to 0. Add 5 to both sides, so that f equals 5. So what do I have? I have two solutions, negative two thirds, and also a positive five for my solutions for what F would be when using the zero product property, all right? But again, that's just gonna be the opposite of what's in here, right? And you can see the opposite here. I do the opposite of this one, which becomes a negative two, and if anything is in front of the F, a number in front of the variable, that becomes my denominator. So in this one here, the shortcut kind of way of looking at it, if I don't solve it out, would be I do the opposite, which is plus. I look at that number as my solution, but because I have a number in front of that, the coefficient, that becomes a positive seven over two. 
Over here I have a opposite, which is negative 10 over that number, which is four. And those become my solution sets. I could reduce and have seven over two. And over here, this would be negative five over two. And those become my two solutions there. So there is a little way of a kind of a shortcut to see how that's gonna work. But really what they want you to do is to set it equal to zero and solve that. Let's do another odd one here. Here we have eight T minus seven equals zero. But add seven over there, that becomes eight T equals seven. Divide both sides by eight so that T equals seven eighths. Over here, three T plus five equals zero. I'm gonna subtract five, so I get three T equals negative five. Divide by three, so that T equals negative five divided by three. So what are my two solutions? My two solutions are gonna be seven eighths and negative five thirds. All right. The next one here, this one's a little different, so it's kind of cool to look at here. When you have a term on the outside and you set it equal to zero, 3m equals zero, well, divide both sides by three if you really want to, and m equals zero. So whenever you have this little term hanging out there by itself with nothing else, it's just gonna be equal to zero. Over here, same idea as before, 2m plus nine equals zero. We subtract nine, so that becomes 2m equals negative nine. We divide both sides by two, so that m equals negative nine over two. So what are our two solutions? Zero and negative nine over two. Right there like that. All right, for the next section, we're gonna solve by factoring. So now we're gonna do the same thing, but instead of having it written out this way, we're gonna put it into factor form and then see what the solution's gonna be. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is factor this out. I have an a squared, so I'm gonna do a and an a. I have 56, and for me, I can look and think, well, that's eight times seven is 56. And I like eight times seven because eight plus seven is gonna get me to 15. So I'm gonna put an eight there and a seven there. I want a negative 15, so I'm gonna get, make sure those are both negative. So I have a negative seven and a negative eight to sum together to make negative 15, plus a negative eight, well, also I should say, negative eight times negative seven is gonna be equal to positive 56. Now, that's my factoring part. So to find my solutions, my solutions become a minus eight equals zero and a minus seven equals zero. We add eight to both sides so that a equals eight. Add seven to both sides over here, so a equals seven. So my two solutions are gonna be eight and seven. Okay, well, that's a terrible little bracket, but you get the idea, <laughs> awful. All right, those are my two solutions there. Number 17, same idea. Here we're gonna factor this out. We have eight X squared and a three. I know the three has to be a three, so I can do a three and a one, that's easy enough. Now for the eight, I'm probably not gonna do an eight because if I did eight and one, that becomes 24, that's way too large, right? If I did one and eight, eight plus one is gonna be 11, not gonna work. So let's try something more like a four and a two. If I put a four here and a two there, I can get a 12 and a two. I like that because what I like about that is I can do a positive 12 and I can do a negative two to leave me with a positive 10. So I'll do 4x minus one times 2x plus three. In terms of my solutions, I set 4x minus one equal to zero, add one to that side so that 4x equals one, divide both sides by four, so x equals one fourth. On this term, I do 2x plus three equals zero I subtract three from both sides, so I get negative three over there. Divide both sides by two, and x equals negative three over two. Three over two, mm, something's a little funny there. I'm looking at the right place. Eight x, four x minus one, 12. Double check real quick, hang on. I have 12 minus two is two. That looks good there, four, huh. Four. Interesting. I'm sorry, I'm just looking at my notes real quick and I did it a different way, I found a different factor. Did I do this right here? Oh, I did not, that's what I did wrong. Okay, sorry, backing up, back up the bus here. Boop, boop, boop. Back up the bus. Here's what I did wrong. I looked back at my factoring and I made a mistake here. You know what I did? Here's what I did. It's okay, it's cool me. Here's 12, that's 10, that's great, but look at my last term, it has to be a positive three. Is that positive three, negative times positive? Nope, it's not. So it tells me I did a goof there. So I need to have a positive and a positive. I know I'm gonna use a four and a two, that's all cool there, but 
let's turn some mix make, make some turns around let me put a three right here and the one right there and make it positive so now I have a 4x plus a 6x to give me a 10x and my outside terms are negative three three times one is three now I'm in better shape so my mistake there sorry about that but hey I don't mind it's all good so now I do 4x plus 3 equals 0 I do 2x plus 1 equals 0 and now when I solve I end up with the opposite of this which is negative 3 over the coefficient which is 4 over here I have the opposite of that which is negative 1 over the coefficient which is 2 and those become my two solutions for that equation and again you can solve that out there all right, so sorry. Over here, number 19. Here we have 5p squared minus 9p minus 2. So 5 is going to be just 5. The only way to do that. I have to deal with 2. If I put a 2 here, that becomes 10, and I get a 1 there. That couldn't work, but I want a negative. So I want a negative 10, and that becomes a positive. Double check my stuff here. Negative a 2, oh, sorry, positive 1 times negative 2 is a negative 2. That's good. So I'm going to be okay there. That, I did the factoring right. It's important you do the factoring right. Don't mess up like I did last time. Now I set them equal to each other or equal to zero. 5p plus 1 equals zero. p minus 2 equals zero. This becomes simply p equals 2. And here this is 5p equals negative 1. And p equals negative 1 over 5. So my solution set is negative 1 fifth and 2. And that's it there. 21. A couple more here to go. I'm going to move this over so I get it in standard form. s squared plus 12s plus 32 equals 0. So make sure you move things around so it's going to be in the right order, in the right, right form. Now I can factor, and we can do an s and an s. And for the 32, I can do 8 and 4. I like that because a positive 8 and a positive 4, when I look at outsides and insides, add together the 12. So s plus 8 equals 0, s plus 4 equals 0, which means s equals negative 8, and s equals negative 4. Those are my two solutions. All right, so my solution set is negative 8, comma, negative 4. For 23, this is a great one. We're going to subtract that over to there. So we get 3j squared minus 21j. Now, what I want to do is factor out something that they both have in common. They both have a 3 and a j in common. What's left on this one is just a j. What's left over here is going to be a 7. 3 times minus 7 is minus 21. So for my terms, this one becomes j equals 0. And over here, j minus 7 equals 0 becomes j equals positive 7. So my solution set is going to be 0 and 7. Remember, why is this equal to 0? Well, what number times 3 can get you to 0? Zero? Uh, 0. That's it. Over here, last one, we have r squared. Moving that over becomes a minus 2r. Moving that over becomes a minus 35 equals 0. So I'm just kind of doing some quick steps there. Factoring out, we have r and r. I'm going to do 7 times 5 because that equals 35. I want it to be negative, so I need 1 to be positive, 1 to be negative. Because I want a negative 2 ninths here, I want a negative solution, 2r, sorry. That needs to be negative. And that needs to be positive, so I end up with what when I multiply this out? Negative 7r and a positive 5r, and that reduces down to what? Negative 2r. So I know I'm okay there. I don't need that for my answer, just for my notes. To find my solution here, r minus 7 equals 0, r plus 5 equals 0, so r equals 7, and r equals negative 5. Those are my two solutions um, when I solve these equations there. All right, that's it for today. We will see you next time.